everybody, and welcome back to the Peter Joy Podcast. I'm here today with Caitlin Louise, and we are going to talk to you guys today about fasting. We get so many questions about how to fast, how long to fast. So welcome, Caitlin. Hi, excited to be here. Yeah, so it was actually your idea to record this podcast because you are the one that handles all the emails. So um, tell us about the questions you've been getting and some of the things that are happening. Sure, yeah. I mean, I feel like you and I have done... a lot of podcasts on fasting in general and usually they're like extended fasts that we're talking about like three to five days even like a seven day and I did a little Instagram video on my latest 36 hour fast which I try and do a couple times a month Um, and I got a load of questions on like what are you doing what are you taking how long are you doing it and why and so we thought you know we haven't really done one that's just a short the power of a short fast so That's our objective today is to explain that. Yeah, and I've been fasting for years. And, you know, some of you guys may have heard other podcasts we've done on, we've talked about cleansing on there. But I have discovered the power of fasting back in the late 90s. And wow, it's, it's, it's transformative. Because I think of it as a reset. And I like to do a fast once a week. And we'll get into kind of the details of it. But first, let's talk about all the benefits of fasting. So before we get into the science of it, I'll talk a little bit about my just personal experiences of how I feel. And we don't want to encourage you to lose fast, to use fasting as a weight loss tool, even though it is, because what happens is with some people, if you're only using it for weight loss, it can backfire because people that have any issues, maybe with food, like an eating disorder, what'll happen is they get into this fasting mode and then they, they tend to binge a little bit. So we don't want to, we just want to preface this with, this is a help tool. Yes. If you start doing this regularly, you'll probably notice that you just feel better and leaner, but it's not the, I, the whole goal is really about getting healthier. So the first thing that I notice for me when I do fast and I'm doing them now, uh, once every Sunday in the past, I've done them on Sundays and Wednesdays. So I switch back and forth and it just depends. Like when summer hits, I tend to fast more in winter. I tend to only fast once a week. Sometimes I'll skip a few weeks and then be like, ah, I need to fast. And I always, it's so funny, Caitlin and I always joke, whenever I'm just, I'll get to a place where I'm calling her and going, I am, I'm in the dumps. I feel, I feel negative. I feel this. And then we'll talk about fasting and then I'll do my fast and I'll say, remind me next time to fast. Because every time I do a fast, it's like a big red reset button and nothing else resets me like fasting does. Like you could take all the supplements in the world. Yes, you can drink green juice, which is amazing for you. But without the actual break from food and the actual fasting, you're just not going to get the same benefits. So what I do is, um, uh, and so before I say what I do, hold on. Uh, um, Yes, so the other benefits I feel is so on Monday morning when I wake up and I have my first meal, I just feel, I don't even feel hungry, first of all. And then as I slowly start to get into my day, maybe around noon or one or two, I'll finally have a meal. And I just feel less hungry but also my mind is clear. And yes, my body feels great too because I take a break from coffee because I'm a regular coffee drinker. So once a week I don't have any coffee. And then when I do have my coffee, it feels like so good. And I really feel the, how coffee does affect us, like how much energy it gives me. And I drink way less of it. So usually for the next couple of days, I don't even drink the normal amount that I drink. So that's another one where it's just like, if you want to get off caffeine, it's a great way to do it. Just take a total break from everything. And um, yeah, my eyes get clearer. And this is usually a longer fast, but even a one day fast, like my uh, people that are around me will be like, oh, your eyes look good. Or you look clear. Or, you look happy. You look bright. Those are a lot of the, the words people use to describe me. And so instead of spending a lot of money on like whatever, you know, anti-aging treatments, fasting is the quickest anti-aging treatment. It, it does all the stuff that chemicals would do to your skin if you go to a spa or whatever and it's free and it's just a really great body reset. That's just the best thing I can say about it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I noticed for me, um, just because I am just coming off of one, it's really fresh in my brain. um, The mental clarity that I receive, like it just is through the roof. Like um, Monday, I definitely felt like I could take on anything and um, I didn't feel any blockages in my brain. I felt motivated, which I love that feeling of just like pure motivation because you love what you do and you feel really great. And also for me, 
having autoimmune and having flare-ups, especially um, during times of high stress, or maybe I ate something that didn't agree with me, fasting just solves all of that um, stagnation that can be stuck in your colon or in your intestines. And it just helps move things along and that inflammation just completely goes away. So that's actually one of the really great benefits of even just a 36 hour fast is you're lowering inflammation in the body, which is super, super important. Yep, and as someone in her 50s, I started experiencing hot flashes and night sweats. Uh, a lot of them in my late 40s, you know, I was starting to get them before that, but the fasting is the one thing that I found to really hit, again, hit the reset. And I don't really ever even get hot flashes or night sweats anymore because of my regular fasting. And so for women trying to balance their hormones at any age, it's a really great hormone reset because think about it. If you're not putting food in and you're not putting like maybe food that isn't even as healthy for you, um, if you're giving your body a day off, the hormones get a chance to go to recalibrate and go, okay, what's important here? What are we doing? And it's just a big rest. And so if you're struggling with, like you said, Caitlin, inflammation or any kind of like overheating, especially in the summer, fasting is going to be a great way to regulate your body temperature and keep you cooler. And uh, even in the winter, I noticed that my body stays warmer because either way, it's the body is regulating its temperature way better. Mm, yeah, I like that a lot. And I always give the little disclaimer for women who are still menstruating. Um, I don't usually plan even a 36 hour fast around my cycle, or even like a couple days before I'm supposed to start, just because that's not usually a time you want to put your body under any sort of stress. And this is good stress, which is what we're going to talk about today. But it's just just planning around that time. Usually we don't even want to fast during that time we definitely have more motivation we're less hungry um, we have more energy during the first part of our um, cycle and even through ovulation so i definitely recommend if you're menstruating to plan your fast around that time too yeah and i would say on that note too that um since i'm a regular runner and exerciser i don't exercise on the day that i'm fasting um, because i'll usually do a water fast and you don't need to do that. I mean, that's like pick Sunday, like what the day off that you would not be exercising anyway is a great day to fast. So it is really a full body reset. Don't feel like you're trying to like, so, okay. So before we start talking about the, all the details, think of your body as like, you want to make friends with your body because so many of us that are treating our body like it's this outside thing and we treat it like an enemy. We look at it in the mirror and we go, why aren't you thinner? Why aren't you this? you know and so instead like thinking what would my body like think of your body as a child what would my child want today to make her feel amazing rest so sleep in as long as you want sleep till 8 a.m if you want to stay in bed some people find that they're super energized but go with whatever you feel especially when you're new to fasting you don't you really want to let if you're an a-type personality you really want to let go of anything that needs to get done on that day. So I tell my friends, because my running friends wanted me to run this Sunday, and I'm like, nope, it's my fasting day. I'm not doing anything. I don't get out of bed. I, I catch up on my reading. I catch up on watching like educational YouTube videos, whatever that feels like for me. In the heat of the summer, I keep the blinds closed and just do like a little dark fast. And so you can really treat it as that. Don't go like if you have other people in the house, don't go downstairs into the kitchen. Like Stay in your own little world and um, create what you need to. And now if you have kids and all that, then of course you're going to have to flex, be flexible, but create as much of a haven and spa and retreat type setting as you can for yourself. And then you start looking forward to your fasting day because most of us are like, oh, I have to fast tomorrow. I'm going to be hungry. Not me. I'm like, I protect that day. I'm like, nope, nothing's scheduled on that day. It's my fasting day. And then Saturday night, I stop eating early and then I'm like, I go to bed early and I'm just like gone for 24 or 36 hours. Nobody even sees me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. Like no meetings, no anything that you have to do. Like definitely if you feel like you have the energy that day and you want to do stuff, like go for it, but don't ever feel like you have to do something that day because it is a sacred time. And when we get into the benefits, like the spiritual benefits or even just the the increased intuition benefits of this, you definitely will see that this is more of a ritual. It's a sacred you time. It's not a thing that you're pushing your body to do or, you know, um, 
what's the word? Mm, can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, let's talk about the benefits. So we talked about like kind of some of the physical things we feel. Let's talk about the actual scientific benefits. One of the first ones that you're going to hear when you hear talk of people talk about fasting is something called autophagy. Some people pronounce it autophagy, but what those two words mean, if you take them apart, is auto uh, means to do it by itself and phagy is to eat. So it's, it's your body is eating its old dead cells. It's They're called senescent cells or just they, some people might just call them old dead protein cells. And your body's going to actually use that time to eat all up all the old junk that's floating around your system, old viruses, old cells. And so what a great thing for it to be doing while you're resting and fasting. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely after that cellular autophagy is happening after the first 24 hours. So if you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll just do a 24 hour fast, you're really going to get so many more benefits if you just push it to that 36 hour mark. And you know, half of that time is when you're sleeping anyway. So it's not like a huge deal. You're just skipping another meal and you're going to wake up the next morning and you can fast. But it's just that that cellular cleanup that happens even in the digestive system and everything, it really happens after that 24 hour mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, that's part, the part where you're sleeping. And so, you know, the 24 hours hits maybe at six to 8 PM, depending on when your last meal was the day before. And then that's just mostly sleeping. And if you're, if you've decided, if you're a coffee drinker or a caffeine user and you've decided to quit caffeine for the day, then you're going to be t more tired anyway. So you might end up sleeping between 10 and 12 hours that day, which is great because you sleep through half your fast. <laughs> exactly. I want to talk about one of the other benefits that both you and I love because um, I actually just motivated two of my friends to do a 36 hour fast for their first time. And what one of my friends said the next day, he says, I feel so clear. I feel so on fire. And that is the ketone part. So we talk about ketosis a lot. You know, the keto diet, it's very popular right now, but actually when you're in ketosis, that's the feeling that you get. And that happens after that 36 hour mark. It actually happens before that your body switches over to actually using its ketones because you've gone through all of your carbohydrate stores and that's when it, your brain just turns on. So I think it's also motivating for people when they feel that they're like, Oh, that's ketosis. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Maybe I do want to go a little bit further with this because I just feel so amazing. So yeah. I know that's what we both love about it too. Yeah. And that's when, so that last, you know, we're talking about the extra uh, eight hours that you're tacking onto the 24 hour fast. And that's when you're burning all your fat. And so if you are someone that's looking to lose a little bit of fat and maybe turn that into muscle, that last eight hours of the fast, that overnight is when you're really going to get the benefits weight loss wise as well. And um, the mood increases, which I think you said, Caitlin, just feeling so good on the ketones. And so if you are on a ketogenic diet, it's a great way to kick yourself into gear and like, mm -hmm. oh, I just like I hear we hear people when we do our courses like, oh, it's hard for me to kick into the keto, ketone, you know burning ketones the first week and we say just wait till Sunday you're going to do your first fast and then you're going to definitely see that ketones are reading on your meter when you um, when you test it. Mm -hmm. And it actually because I know for a lot of our clients they're coming to us with insulin issues or blood sugar issues or you know diabetes or leading into diabetes and the other benefit is this, of this fasting is actually balancing that blood sugar. So you may feel like you're going to be ravenous that next morning, like, oh, you just want to eat everything. But actually, you're healing your blood sugar, you're lowering your insulin, and it's easier to um, navigate your hunger hormones. They're not constantly being kicked on, and they're actually going to balance themselves out really, really quickly. So that is a lot. I know that's a fear for some people. And I know for me, I just feel this very calm sense of hunger. And I know when I eat that first meal, I usually can't even get through it. You think you're going to eat a ton of stuff, but your stomach actually does shrink in that 36 hours, believe it or not. And you just don't necessarily, um, you're able to stop when you're full. Let's just say it that way. Yep. And that's the ghrelin hormone. The ghrelin is the one that tells you you're hungry. So it's just like, yep, it's just, it just subsides. And, and like I said, I don't even get hungry till the middle of the day just because I'm on a different, I don't know, everybody's body is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we also want to encourage you because we're talking about timing. 
not to do more than 48 hours. And we really want to encourage you to do 36 the first few times you fast. In fact, I only do 36 because if I even, if I, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start doing 48, which is two days, then I'm not gonna wanna do it. It's like running a marathon your first time out or running five miles your first time out. You're not gonna wanna do it again. Everything's gonna be sore. You're gonna have this memory of not enjoying it. So you wanna make it a time span that you're gonna enjoy it. So if it's your very first one and you're afraid of doing 36 hours, you know, just tell yourself, I'm gonna go to the 24 hour mark and see how I feel. Because sometimes we just need to kind of play this little game with ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what we tell people with eating healthy. It's like, tell yourself you can have the cookies or the treats later, as opposed to saying I can never have that again. So we kind of sometimes have to play a little bit of mind games. And the other thing I was gonna mention is if you are a person that gets really irritable when you're fasting or when you haven't had food, that might be a reason why you want to tell people if you have a partner or you have people in your life, hey, I'm going to be having mood fluctuations because I'm new to fasting. Um, just it's a good time to give me space. And my, why don't you guys all go out for the day? And then you can kind of just feather your nest and get comfy, read your books, do whatever it is for you that makes you feel happy, which could be sleeping. And mm -hmm. um, I want to encourage you to catch up on sleep during this time because this is when you're going into cellular repair. And everything is repairing itself, so it's almost like a mini operation. You're, you wouldn't even believe the, how many things are happening in your liver. Like um, you're basically burning through all of your glycogen, which is in your liver. And so once that, it's probably between 18 to 24 hours hits, you're, you're kind of using up your glucose that's in your liver. And then you're going to go into gluconeogenesis, which is when you're just, the repair cycle comes in. So this is all super important to know that you're not just helping for, you know, a surface thing, but you're actually healing your liver on a cellular level. Mm, yeah, that's why I love it too. Just, just feel so supercharged after that. Yeah. yeah. And so we talked about kind of a lot of the benefits. And then let's talk a little bit more about the details and kind of how uh, you want to lay it out for us, kind of how it looks, Caitlin. Yeah, sure. So I'll give you an example of what I did this time and, you know, what we do every time just because people really like specifics, I realized. And um, we really have this part down because 36 hours is just my go-to fasting besides doing the longer fast every, you know, once a year or twice a year. But what I do for the 36 hours is I usually have my last meal around six. It could be between six and eight, which is a really good time to have your last meal every day. But between six and eight, and I try not to eat a lot and I try not to make it too carb heavy because what I notice is when I eat a really heavy carb meal before my fasting day, my insulin is already risen and my blood sugar has dropped the next day to the point where I feel really, really hungry, even at a time when I'm not usually hungry. So that those extra carbs in your system can just make that fasting day feel a little bit harder to do. Um, so you're stop eating between 6 and 8 p.m. let's say on a Saturday and then you're waking up you're drinking your lemon water as you normally would um, and then we can talk about some of the other beverages you can consume but we should probably talk a little bit about supplements because this is when I usually take my first sort of supplement which is basically supplementing my fast to make um, the cellular cleanup and all of those amazing benefits just happen that much better and one that I really like to take is our reconstructive enzymes, which is a systemic enzyme or metabolic enzyme. And this enzyme is working without food. So it's not digesting your food. It's not, an en it's not a digestive enzyme, but this is an actual systemic enzyme that's going in your body and cleaning up old debris. It's cleaning up undigested proteins that are free floating in your system. Any fibrin, any fibroid tissue, scar tissue, any of that stuff, it's really just helping to clean up. And when we're fasting, it can work that much quicker because it literally has nothing to pass through. It's just going straight into your system and really starting that um, cleanup. And I usually like to take my fasting days off of a lot of other supplements, but this is one thing that I really make sure that I do. And we'll make sure to put the, sh uh, the enzymes that we use in the show notes too. Yeah, and the other, th the other benefit of taking those enzymes is that you won't get a lot of the side effects that some people get while they're fasting, which could be a headache, the blood sugar fluctuations, all those things, the, 
the enzymes seem to really help because it's cleaning up the toxins so your body doesn't your bloodstream doesn't have to process them because it's just basically like just think of it as like the little cleanup crew that's coming in like nope you don't need that you don't need that and it's just dissolving it and just getting rid of it and so it's really more than just uh taking it to break that stuff down it's also making you feel more comfortable and it's just less of a toxic load on your body by taking some enzymes some metabolic reconstructive enzymes with it and um, just quickly we want to talk about the lemon water because maybe some people are new to it what you're going to want to do is just fill up a quart size jar with warmish water like room temperature to warm water and maybe just a squeeze of a half a lemon in that water that's plenty and then you just want to kind of have that really hydrate your cells in the morning the lemon will bring the water back to life and it's also a, a liver purifier so that's why we feel lemon is the perfect way to start your morning um, before you do anything else just get some of that lemon water in your body or you could also use limes if you don't have lemons available Mm -hmm. And make sure you're using like a little um, filter or maybe a nut milk bag or strainer so you're not getting any of that pulp in there. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. And so, and then when you, so what we like to do is don't feel like you have to have anything. So if you think, okay, well, maybe let me just see how long I can go after I've had my lemon water before I feel any hunger pangs or just notice anything. I mean, if you have a big, quart size jar of lemon water it might be till 11 o'clock or even 12 till you even feel any hunger pangs and then what you can do if you want is you can keep decide to keep going on water for the 36 hours which is a little bit more of an advanced one but if you're new to it you can have a green juice and we love celery juice and we also put a little bit of lemon or lime juice in that so you could take like one head of celery and juice that down and put again the other half maybe the other half of the lemon or lime in that and then that could be like your lunchish beverage. And then other things you can supplement. And let's just talk a little bit, Caitlin, about the benefits of green juice, even though most people that listen to us know how amazing it yeah. is. Yeah, we'll make sure to put some recipes too so you can have a few options for green juice. But I just know that it's extremely alkalizing for my system. Um, it really does help with a fast. So if you are new, do not be afraid of having as much green juice as you want. Really, if you're not adding any fruits or even cucumbers in there, just keep it really simple. Maybe some parsley, maybe some cilantro. I got that question like, will that break my fast? No, because you're juicing it. You're not eating any of the fiber. Um, and those are really the amazing benefits that I feel from it. And it just cleans out your system too. So you might have a bowel movement soon after that, which is what we want when we're fasting. Mm -hmm. And celery juice will definitely make you run to the toilet because what it does is, especially if it doesn't happen to me as often, but for people that are new, there's a lot of toxic buildup in your bowels. And as soon as that green juice hits, it just everything wants to leave and it's so great because it's like getting your own colonic it's just like everything wants to get out and then you feel like you've emptied your whole colon out it feels really good mm -hmm. yeah yeah and yeah speaking of that like the joy factor comes in there too like you feel like suddenly like oh i feel so good after drinking this juice like your cells feel healthy and plump and hydrated so green juice is one of the best ways to hydrate your cells for sure because uh, water alone sometimes doesn't fully hydrate. Have you ever drank and drank and drank and you're like, I still don't feel hydrated. It's mm -hmm. because there's no electrolytes in the water and there's, you know, it's kind of more dead because it's filtered water. Whereas green juice is like the blood of the plant. So you're getting like an infusion of this amazing, already structured water that's perfectly structured for your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it, and. I tend to want a lot more green juice in the summer when I'm fasting too. I just crave that really hydrating, cold beverage. Yeah. Nice and cold right out of the fridge. I actually just drank one before we started this. I had a celery juice in the fridge from yesterday and I just drank the whole thing. It's just, and that just on that note, even if you're not fasting, drinking celery juice in a hot middle of a hot day instead of before you have your lunch, is just going to really hydrate you and you're going to probably eat way less and you're going to feel more balanced. Mm -hmm. And it's another just really great liver cleanser, liver detoxifier. It just helps the whole system and the bile production and all of that good stuff going through the pancreas and spleen and stomach. So it's just overall a good supplement to add to your day. Yeah. And if you don't have celery juice, let's say you're just like, oh my gosh, like I don't even know where to start with that. Just buy yourself some green powder. It could be grass powder, like wheatgrass powder, barley grass, oat grass, or a combination of powders. Just make sure there's no fruit juice 
and make sure that there's not really any calories in it. You don't want it to be like carbs or calories, but you could take like a teaspoon or to a tablespoon of green powder, mix that into like two cups of water and drink that as your green juice substitute. If you can't make green juice or you don't, maybe you're traveling or you're just somewhere where you don't have access to green juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. And the next thing, especially if you're, um, you know, vata or you tend to get really, really cold, especially even if it's a hot day or you just get really imbalanced from something like green juice that's, you know, very cooling to the system because celery is very cooling and any of the herbs are going to be very cooling. So the other thing I'd recommend is um, hot teas or hot broths throughout the day, like herbal tea in the morning if you want it, something that's not a stimulant, something like chamomile or nettles, um, something that's just really nourishing and balancing that'll warm up, warm up your system. Because honestly, even for me, um, it's over 100 degrees here right now. And when I fasted, I was cold all day long. And I kept going outside and just like baking in the sun because your body just tends, like you said at the beginning, it runs a little bit colder. So having those hot beverages can be really nourishing and balancing. Yeah, totally. And this is a good time to talk about the different kinds of teas. You mentioned a couple. But do your research, you know, just get on a website and look like benefits of herbal tea and you're going to see like there's one called Eyebright. So if you want to improve your eyesight, get some Eyebright tea and brew that up. There's another one called Chanka Piedra, which tastes actually pretty good. And that one means break stone. So it breaks down kidney stones, gall stones, liver stones. So if you're someone that's working on your liver, that would be a great tea to have during your fast. Um, choose something medicinal. Don't just go for some fruity tea. Go for something that you know you feel is going to have some benefit to you and any kind of liver like if there's yogi teas there's some called liver detox that would be a great tea and those usually taste delicious if you have a problem with constipation or you have a problem with you know just you feel like your gut's really full you could take something called smooth move tea um or there's another one that's like a similar kind of tea that has the same kind of oh uh, i think it's called uh i don't know if you know the name of the yeah name. i'm trying to think of it yeah there's smooth move and then there's like get regular. Oh, that's what it's called. Yeah. So yeah, you guys get the idea. So do what you need to do for you to make sure that that tea is going to nourish you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then and also, before we move on is some people are going to think, oh, well, could I have coffee? Uh, black coffee has no calories. We are actually talking about a healing detox right now. Like you could, if you're just listening to a lot of the podcasts and websites that are talking about fasting for autophagy and fasting for, you know, weight loss, they say, oh yeah, just, you can drink black coffee. And you totally could believe me. If this is like your first time and you're like, well, I don't think I can get through my day without coffee. The first time black coffee would be fine, but we don't encourage it because we want to give your body one day a week. We're encouraging you to start making this a regular practice because one day a week, your adrenals need to rest. You need to sleep fully. 8, 10, 12 hours. You just need, you need to nap. You need to not feel like you want to run a marathon. This is the whole point. So if you can, don't do coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to, you know, you get to choose. And it won't break your fast. It won't ruin your fast. It's just you won't get quite as many benefits. Mm -hmm. And I find I'll get hungrier earlier in the day if I have a stimulant like that. I can just, it kind of whacks you out a little bit when you're not having anything in the system because that caffeine just hits you straight away instead of being kind of absorbed and blocked slowly by other fats or other foods. I call it washing machine stomach. You're just like churn, churn, churn. And then you're like a little edgy because like you said, there's nothing to, ba to no base. Yeah. Uh, I don't like just straight up black coffee on an empty stomach. It's too, too harsh for me. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. So that's the morning. That's just that's the morning. Not, not through the morning. Yeah. Or midday. Um, yeah. And then, you know, really just sticking to the same beverages. We don't want to throw in anything else. Those are really the only ones. And again, like if you just want to do water, that's going to definitely enhance your fast that much more. But for your first time, I always say, Drink as many beverages as you want, sticking to the herbal teas. Even like a veggie broth would be really nice. I know I do this almost every time. A homemade veggie broth with some mineral salt in there. And that is like my dinner. And it's just like at the time that you want to quit or that you're feeling just so hungry, having the veggie broth with salt is like having a soup. And it just, it helps me sleep. And it, it's just so much more balancing. 
You know, when I did my water fast, you and I did that one together. It was over Christmas break, and you and I did a five-day water fast together. And we were um, listening to a lot of stuff by Dr. Dan Pompa. And he said to do, because it was only water, we weren't even having tea. He said to do half a teaspoon, or maybe it was a quarter teaspoon, of salt in hot water. And so I boiled the water, and I put a little salt in there, and it was so delicious. And like you said, it felt like such a treat to have that salty water. So if you're doing just a water fast, do the salt water. If you're doing uh, like a little bit of juice and teas, then do, like you said, the veggie broth. And you can even just boil up an onion and a carrot and a piece of celery. It doesn't have to be any like fancy recipe at all. We save the scraps of all of our vegetables. Like right now in my fridge has carrot peels and some onion ends and some garlic skins and some celery ends from juicing and maybe some ends of herbs because they were going to go bad. And then I'll just boil that up. I'll fill a whole Ziploc bag in my freezer and then boil that up. And then I've got like four days worth of broth. And I can use that as a base in my soups. But on my fasting day, I can just have some broth. It's already mm -hmm. made. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing we didn't really mention is if you're a seasoned faster or, you know, maybe you're coming back to it after a long time. If you're, if you're comfortable with doing enemas, we have a whole uh, blog that we can link to on how to do an enema. And I even have, we even have a video that I did on um, showing you all the details of the enema bucket and how it works. Um, do an enema or a coffee enema if you feel like really toxic, if you just feel awful. An enema is a great way to just clean out that colon even faster. Mm -hmm. Why be miserable if you don't have to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would encourage everyone to try them at least once, maybe on your second fast. Because when you're not giving your body any food, it can really start... And we're drinking so many liquids. That's the really key part too, is all those liquids are really going to soften everything up in that colon and just make it that enema so much more powerful than if you were to just do an enema on a regular day with all of your meals. It's, it's, total, it's a totally different experience for your body too. Yeah. And you and I both had the same colon hydrotherapist for a while when we were in, in Tucson, Caitlin. And I remember her saying that she always did the colonic where she put the water in really slowly because she said, Think of your colon as like this dry, crusty earth. If you water it too fast, the water just runs right off. But if you slowly soak it, that mm. soil gets soft. And that's the caked on layer in your colon. So by hydrating with all these liquids, and then you can even do your colonic on the next day, like on, on the, the last morning when you wake up after having fasted for 36 hours, you could do it then if you want to, just to get all that extra debris out that built up while you were sleeping. There's no right or wrong. You could do both days. You could do it on the day you're fasting and the morning after. Um, just start getting that stuff out of your colon and getting it unclogged the best you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's see, what else? What else do we do? Magnesium before bed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you and I have talked about this already on the last podcast, but we do um, a magnesium liquid and we can put that in the link. And then I also take a, another magnesium supplement. I was finding for me, and this happened after I started eating more of a ketogenic diet, is I was getting foot cramps more often than I ever remember getting in my life. I mean, I remember as a kid getting Charlie horses, but this was like more consistent. And when I started upping my magnesium, think gone. And that also helps you have better bowel movements. So if you take uh, magnesium that night of your fast, like that first 24 hours, you take it at bedtime, you're going to wake up in the morning and have a nice big BM and you're going to feel so good. Mm -hmm. And it's also very relaxing too. Like it just puts you in that relaxed state where you just, your all your muscles are relaxed and you just feel all juicy because sometimes fasting can bring up some anxiety. I know for me that used to happen a lot where I'd feel really anxious and something like magnesium just really helps. And for me, I know you're not a chamomile drinker, but chamomile <laughs> works really well for me, especially when I'm fasting to also just put me right to sleep. Cause sometimes when we have those hunger pains, which you're going to get hungry, like that's just part of fasting and it's being able to like sink into some of that discomfort instead of feeling anxious about it. And the magnesium and maybe some chamomile tea can really help with that. You know, that's a good practice in general. And I want to say that we are planting chamomile where, you know, at my house right now. So I'll probably become a chamomile tea, tea drinker, but the great practice with this is that you know, I happen to be one of those people that tends to like to eat at night, but 
I'm really gotten so much better at not eating at night. And one of the things you can do, even if you do a, brew it up early and have it be a cold tea at night, because I tend to get too hot, but just having tea at night instead of a snack. And then you just start getting in this habit of like after 7 p.m. or after 6 p.m., I only have tea and I can even make it iced, like a peppermint iced tea. So getting in this habit of that evening beverage that's going to soothe you and get you ready for sleep. And, you know, we know that everybody's not like us, like they might be, you might party a little bit more. So, you know, have your nights that you go out and enjoy and do whatever you do, but then have like 80% of the time, which is maybe five nights a week that you're going to bed early, you're having your chamomile tea, you're reading your book, you're educating yourself, you're filling your mind with good stuff, listening to good podcasts or meditations and drinking your tea. And you're going to, you're going to be the one that's up early getting that jump on the day and feeling amazing and you're not going to be the one that's hungover and feeling groggy and because your liver's toxic so there's just so many habits we're filling into this little time that this fasting will start getting you in the habit of doing these things more often mm -hmm. yeah i like that too mm -hmm. um and then what uh the last thing that i would do on my fast is take some more of those enzymes those systemic enzymes that we were talking about so I would probably take another four or five of those enzymes because they're going to continue working on you if you're going to take them in the morning and then again in the evening. That's when you're really going to get all of that cellular benefit. So that's another really great thing to do the night of your fast. Yes, the night that after you fasted all day that night. Yeah. And we didn't really say much about these reconstructive enzymes because I know you guys have heard us talk about them before, but those who are maybe listening for the first time, you know, Caitlin mentioned something about fibrin and scar tissue, but we have actually had so many women that have started taking our enzymes that have gotten rid of polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a very painful syndrome that happens in women's uteruses with these cysts that come up. With the lumps in the breast, the cysts in the breast, people dissolving those. Scar tissue in joints that they've just had this joint pain for years, that's starting to dissolve. So in conjunction with fasting, which will help do that anyway, these reconstructive enzymes, when taken on a regular basis, are going to totally, it's like actually miraculous stories that we hear about people that are like, oh my gosh. And for me too, like shoulder pain that went away completely. Um, these reconstructive enzymes can be super, super beneficial. So it's something you're going to want to look into and maybe start a system or a regimen of taking them and just see how it works in your body. Yeah, that's a good point. I actually did get that question like, oh, you take these during your fasting, but do you continue taking them? And if any of these reasons to take them resonated with you, then definitely get yourself on them for at least a month. I mean, we would recommend three months of these to really get all of those benefits. But yes, you'll be taking them twice a day for, you know, at least that full bottle and you probably should get to just to really see the benefits of them. So yes, continue taking those even after you're fasting. Just making sure that you're not taking them with food at all. That's why we say in the morning or in the evening. Right, because otherwise you're just gonna be digesting your food instead of digesting all these dead cells and the fibrin and stuff. Um, and then you would wanna take somewhere between four and five in the morning and four and five at night. Uh, you know, just maybe start with four each time and just see how it goes. See if you wake up sharper and clearer and feeling better. And if you have a sauna, it would be great to take your reconstructive enzymes and then get in a sauna mm -hmm. uh, or sweat in some way. We didn't really talk about that, Caitlin, but sweating is going to be. So let's talk about a few of the things that you can do while you're fasting to kick it up. One of them is sauna. And I know right now, like, well, depending on when you're listening to this, maybe you have access to your gym and maybe you don't. But you could just take a really hot shower and really get your body sweating and hot. You can also get in your bed and put a comforter on and just get really warm and hot in your bed. And um, a Epsom hot, salt bath. Epsom salt bath, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or salt bath, either one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of things we can do throughout the day to really just help with that, those detox and cleansing and, and have your own spa day. We actually have a whole uh, blog on this. So maybe I'll just post a blog. It's like a one day where you can just have a spa day. You can do your dry skin brushing, your rebounding, your, your sauna or your bath. Um, and that'll give you a lot of really great tips on what to do during your fasting days. Yep. And since I'm a cold plunger, I can't go without saying that cold and hot together is the great way to expand and contract your blood vessels and your whole lymphatic system. So if you've got access to both, 
you could do like I have a little cold bathtub in my backyard. It's a, just a big uh, horse trough. So you could soak in that for two to three minutes and then get in your hot tub and then get in your cold plunge and get in your hot tub. So set yourself up for success because the reason we're doing this and if you followed our podcast and you've listened to us before or followed our website or our blog, you'll know that we're in this for life. This isn't just like a how to fast once a year thing. This is like how to create a lifestyle that makes you youthful, energetic, that you're actually annoying to other people because you have so much energy, <laughs> which happens to me sometimes. People are like, I can't believe you get up so early and have so much energy. It's like, it's because I have good practices and it feels good to me. My mind yeah. is really sharp. It's clear. I'm happy. I'm joyful. I can go places and not be cranky at people. I think that's a good thing. So get yeah, yeah. on the bandwagon of like being on a healthy track where you feel good all the time. Yeah. And hearing that said for some of you may be like, oh, that'll never be me. But honestly, even the two friends that did their first fast, like they did not think they can do it. And now they're like, oh, my brain, my meditation, everything. Oh, I love the world. Like you just, you start seeing things with new eyes, like literally your eyesight even gets better through these processes. So even if it seems very daunting right now, trying it, you'll really understand what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And I want to get into what to do like when you break your fast, but Caitlin, just talk about that. Like, so the two friends that you had that you kind of coached through this 36 hour fast, because you and I were talking about it before we hit record, but I don't think you've said it on the podcast. Like talk about what the guy said after fasting and like how they just a little bit about their experience. Yeah. Um, well, the one thing that he said was, wow, that was really easy which was not something that I expected. Like, and another thing that he said is, I wish I could go longer. Like, it doesn't feel like it's enough. And, you know, what we said at the beginning is you may want to go longer. And if you're feeling called to it or have the space, like by all means, but don't go so long that you won't want to do it again. Like, I feel like for him now, he's like, oh, I did this thing. I feel amazing. I'm accomplished something. And then next time I can do it again and I can be really excited to do it instead of pushing it so far where you're like, oh, I re like dread doing the next one. Like I've been in those places before and it made me stop fasting for way too long because I made myself so uncomfortable. So not pushing it too long. And then what he also said, which is, I think I mentioned this, but the mental clarity that he was like, wow, I can just do anything right now. Like I really do feel unstoppable and I just feel really balanced and not hungry that's another thing that you you would never expect like not having any of those hunger pains yeah and um also i didn't mention this but if you're gonna go 48 hours and especially if you're a woman who's trying to lose weight you're gonna it's not a good idea to go 48 hours because if you go any longer than 48 hours you're gonna tell your metabolism that there's no food and it's gonna slow down but if you keep it at 36, your metabolism will not be affected at all. And I'm sure some of you are wondering about that. Will this slow my metabolism down? Absolutely not. 36 hours is a perfect amount of time because that could have been an amount of time if, as a hunter or gatherer that we would have like been without food once a week or every so often. And so it's normal and the body should adapt pretty well to that. Mm -hmm. And um, also longer than that, besides the metabolism, I think that was the only thing other than that. And then just that you don't really want to keep doing it if it's 48 hours. And that yeah. way you look forward to it every week. Like this guy's probably going to start doing it once a week because he's like, I feel so good. Yeah. The other thing is, no, it, don't have that mentality of no pain, no gain. It should feel good. It should be great. You shouldn't be like, oh, I didn't work hard enough. That's an old paradigm. Get mm -hmm. rid of that thought system. It should be fun. It should be easy. It should be joyful. And you should feel totally peaceful. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said, like what came to mind is the dose is either the medicine or the poison. Like with any supplement we take, the dosage will either make us feel really great or we take too much and it'll make us feel really sick. Or even like a glass of wine. We drink one, we feel really great. We don't have any negative side effects. We drink two and our whole world is falling apart. So it's the same thing with fasting. Like you, fasting has so many amazing benefits if we don't push it too long. Yeah. Um, okay, and so let's break the fast. We've woken up. It's Monday morning. For you, Caitlin, it's probably 6 a.m. For me, I get up and I do all my meditation first, so I don't usually go downstairs till 8 a.m. What's the first thing you're going to have? What are we going to do? Well, when I was first doing this, the first thing that I would have is probably the same lemon water, green juice, um, and then just waiting till I'm hungry. I 
wouldn't necessarily break it with a huge meal. You still want to be hydrating. You're still going to receive some of the benefits that day, even after you eat, if you set your body up that morning. So I wouldn't jump into a huge meal. Um, and then probably a couple of hours after that, I, I would probably have a coffee because I'm also a coffee drinker. Yeah, we love our coffees. And we blend, those of you who follow us, and we'll put a link to our amazing little video to show you how to make your own bullet. Um, we call it uh, keto coffee or superwoman coffee. But you, we put all these medicinal mushrooms and coconut oil and healthy, really great fats in there. To, it's a great way to kind of buffer the coffee and feel super great. And if you're not a coffee drinker, you could do that with tea or you can have what we call a golden milk, which is turmeric blended with coconut milk. And it's like a hot beverage with some ginger. And that's super fabulous as well. Um, and a smoothie could be a great way to start, like a light soup or smoothie, depending on the time of year. Maybe in the winter, you want to have more of a hot beverage and in the summer, uh, maybe a light smoothie. Or you could even take your green juice and blend it with um, some aloe vera, like the aloe vera gel, or blend it with a half of an avocado, and then just make it a little heavier. Mm -hmm. And then ease yourself into lunchtime. So the morning, you kind of want to stay on liquids, and then maybe by noon or one, you're like, oh, I'm feeling pretty hungry. Go for it. And I also wanted to mention that um, try to stay, even if you're not a vegan, try and stay vegan on that Monday. Because mm -hmm. then that way you've kind of done two days vegan because you were fasting on the Sunday. And then Monday, you know, just don't eat any animal products. And then on, by Tuesday, just go back to your normal eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot because when we're adding in animal products, we can, uh, we get that heavy sense again. And we don't really get to reap the entire benefits of that 36 hours we just went through. At least that's how it is for me. Um, since it is, it takes a lot longer to digest. So what I also told them was don't eat anything that usually makes you feel heavy. Like don't eat a big bowl of beans. If you usually can't digest beans, like don't go after your no regular or normal foods just because you're feeling really hungry. Like stick to the things that you know that you feel good on and that are easy for your digestive system to handle. You know, it would be great is some sauteed garlic in a skillet and then steam up some broccoli, throw some olive oil on that, a little salt, you know, avocado on the side, maybe a base of some greens and one of our salad dressings, which is like a red bell pepper or a green goddess or, you know, our ranch. We have a macadamia nut ranch dressing, something like that. That's going to make you feel super good and nourished and like you got a little bit of cooked food, a little raw food, a little balance. It's going to be really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I know we're running out of time here, but uh, let's just answer the last two questions that we had. Yeah. And one of them was, how often should I do this 36 hour fast? And I know Elena, you mentioned that you do this once a week, which I think is a really, really great routine to get into. But I would say if you're first starting out, at least, you know, once a month would be the minimum amount. Mm -hmm. And then maybe working up to twice a month and then, you know, maybe eventually every week. Yeah, and what I want to say with that is if you pick once a month, pick after the full moon. So the full moon is a perfect time, the two weeks after to do a fast because it's a pulling moon and it's going to pull more toxins out. So between the full and the new moon, and that's pretty easy to check on your calendar when the moon is. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, every full moon, the following Sunday, I'm going to do a fast. And that'll be a great way to regulate it. And then, but if you're fasting every week, don't worry about the moon cycles because it's still going to be, you're still going to get great benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And then the last question was, when do you know that it's time to do a longer fast? And I'm going to link all of our other podcasts on how we do our extended fasting, like, you know, once or twice a year. Um, but what would you say on this? When do, you, when do you feel like, you know, I've done my 36 hours, I'm ready for more. I feel like I need to go deeper. Yeah. I would say every change of season. So right now, uh, I mean, spring, we're probably, we're almost to summer. So right now, if you're listening to this right when it came out, do like right around June 21st, anywhere of that last week of June or early July is a great time. So the beginning of summer, beginning of fall, beginning of winter and beginning of spring or any time during that season. But that's usually when the colds and flus hit is right at the change of season because the temperatures are changing. So maybe instead of saying the change of season, say the change of temperature, like, oh, summer's hitting hard. It's getting hot. Time to do a cleanse. Plus, we love cleansing in the summer. Um, and then like once a year. So that would be like a three-day fast. 
And then once a year, I like to do a five day fast. And for me and you, Caitlin, we like to do that around the holidays. But I used to do only water during that time. And now I prefer to do more like one day of water, then green juice and things like that, and like mix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just because the last time I did a five day water fast, it just felt like a little too long for me. My hormones felt a little out of balance. So you'll learn how to regulate that as well. And we have an interview we can link, the one I interviewed Don, Dr. Pompa on that one, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. We have so much information on that kind of stuff. So when you're ready, you'll, you'll listen to the other podcasts for sure. And on that note, um, as we sign off and say goodbye, uh, we do have a retreat coming up for women, a keto retreat in July of 2020, if, depending on when you're listening to this. But if it's after that, we'll, we have, we're going to be having more retreats. So check us out on purejoyplanet.com. Just click on the retreats button and um, find out what we're doing. And then we also have a continuous month-long coaching program. And our next one starts July. Is it? Third. Third. Okay. Um, so right at 4th of July, we're starting our keto program. And it's a month long where we coach you on how to eat, all the recipes. We do a cooking class every week. We do a coaching call every Friday. We do uh, online support. We do in-person support on the coaching calls. We are just totally, we give you lessons every day. We're in your ear. We're helping you meditate. We're helping you do yoga. We're helping you do uh, core workouts, all of it. And it's a total lifestyle re-reformation, like reconstruction. Yeah. And we're also all fasting every Sunday together. So if you are someone who needs a little bit more motivation, um, definitely it's amazing. You're fasting with sometimes a hundred other women on Sunday. So it's just really keeps, we all keep each other accountable. We all share our struggles. We all share our wins. So if you're interested in fasting and this sparked your interest and you want to try it for an entire month, join our coaching program. Yeah. So we want to thank you for joining us today. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe so you get every video that comes out. We do a lot of recipe videos and different things. And if you like and subscribe, it helps our algorithms. And then if you're listening to this as a podcast, same thing. If you could give us a review just by scrolling down and hitting the five star button <laughs> and subscribe so that you keep up to date. And I'm interviewing people all the time on all kinds of spiritual stuff, transformational stuff. It's not just about food and fasting. It's also about like whole life transformation. And I'm trying to find the best, most interesting people to talk to about all of this. Beautiful. So thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you very soon.